There was once my five years old little cousin came to my house and he went up to the LCD television screen and he did this action. We were all puzzled by what he was trying to do. Afterwards, we realized he was swiping the television screen as though he's swiping an iPad. And later on, he even became a teacher to teach my younger niece on how to navigate this uh, technology gadgets. Once again, a very good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackson, and I'm extremely passionate about innovation and entrepreneurship. Technology is so pervasive in our lives today, and it will be even so for the generation to come. A recent study shows that there are more children who know how to operate a smartphone application, but doesn't know how to tie their shoelaces. <laughs> However, the problem is more children are growing up as mere tech consumers rather than creators. What if we could change that? During my undergraduate days, I started Tech Society to impart technical skills and passion for them to learn more about technology and its application. To inspire the next generation, not just as consumer, but also creators. We want to empower children to use technology to share, develop, and learn. Our mission is to allow them to have a structural framework similar to the one you see from music grading from beginner to advanced. We make technology education fun, accessible, and engaging by incorporating our unique pedagogy of play, experiment, create, and pitch. We aim to transform the culture of learning by contextualizing technologies into something that children can easily understand, relate, and appreciate. We also pay great attention to real-life applications and relevancy. So students will be asked to think about their environment and how they can use technology to improve it. Let me share with you two interesting examples. The first, a math game. Students who don't like mathematics love math after creating a math game program. A second, a bread expiry application. Students found out that on every day, bread are being thrown away in huge quantity. So they have created a simple phone tracker app that notifies beneficiaries around the areas hours before the bread gets expired. And volunteers will come over and redistribute it for consumption. And this was solution conceptualized and created by primary school level students. And children being children, sometimes they have really interesting problems that I didn't know is a problem until they, they said so. Also related to bread, which I don't know why. So to this group of children, right, every day spreading jam and mother on the bread is a huge problem. And they are serious about it. They even mention that if I spend three to five minutes a day spreading jam, multiplied by per week, multiplied by per month, multiplied by per year, so much time is being wasted just by spreading jam. Yeah. And they want to solve this problem. They even went to do comprehensive market research that said that right now all solutions in the market can only toast the bread. I did still need to uh, spread it manually. So what they had in mind is something like a smaller version of an airport conveyor belt where the bread will go through some sort of machine, spread the jam, and eventually toast it. However, we did tell them that this is introduction to programming. What they wanted to do is actually possible but it's actually a little advanced with integration with hardware and other technologies. But it's good. If you learn the basics today, in the future, you can create amazing solutions like what you have just shared. So you can see that children are very creative and also very curious about the world and how they can use technology to change their surroundings. So in my mission to spread technology as the literacy of future, in 2016, I started a ground-up initiative called Code for ASEAN, where we flew over to neighboring countries to spread technology and its application and how people can get started. And this was supported by former US President Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative, which backed projects that have a positive impact in the region. So over the years, I'm deeply honored to receive a lot of support and assistance from organization and institution to fly to countries like Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia to impact thousands of people on technology and its applications. Today, I think I'm very privileged 
to be in this auditorium together with young leaders and aspiring individuals that share the same passion. And I believe that this combina combination of passion and experience can generate something that can change lives of thousands and millions of people around the world. Because personally for myself, mentorship and role model plays a huge role in my life. I believe all of us are here today because of curiosity. Curious to learn, curious to find out, curious to see. Curiosity in mind, whether in yourself or others, be the first to seek out for answers and come up with solutions will open wealth of opportunities. Opportunity arise when we couldn't make sense of something and especially when a huge group couldn't make sense of it as well. All these will form what we call knowledge gap. And when knowledge gap is formed, this is where we unfold our curiosity into opportunity and put it into reality. I believe that curiosity alone cannot lead to real change. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that curiosity alone is incorrect. It is just incomplete. What we need on top of curiosity is to take massive action. Throughout my entrepreneurial journey, I took massive action. Many people will spend a lot of time to discuss, to plan, to talk about what they want to do. But at the end of the day, they don't do. And that's the key. So taking action is very important because when you take action, you build momentum. I have been able to achieve this much early on in life simply just be because I take action. When people talk about what if we can create an app to help to solve this problem, I went ahead to create the application. When people talk about what if we can create some ground up initiative for people to learn more about coding and technology, I went ahead to create a company to facilitate this type of training. We just have to turn that what if and the thought that we have in mind and put it into reality. I understand that a lot of people are hesitant of taking massive action because of failure or even mockery from their peers and surroundings. But the bigger question that you can ask yourself today is how would you know even before you try? I believe people mock at us is because we actually spend much more time talking about it than taking action. I agree that taking action is a scary thing and being different is very difficult. A reality of life is as long as we are doing things that is not the status quo, we will face a lot of rejection, criticism. But the good news today is, as long as we are different and making a difference, magic happens. Towards the end of my undergraduate studies, just before I graduate, I have this privilege to be selected for this program called the Singapore Valley Awards. They have sent me to Alibaba headquarters for a summer to acquire a deeper knowledge of the market and entrepreneurship in practice. I was also given this opportunity to learn from leading China entrepreneurs such as the co-founders of Alibaba and established venture capital firm. I was deeply inspired over my time over there, changing the way I live, work and play. Nothing has come anywhere close to the meaning of these words until the experience that I have experienced over there. It was also very interesting to see how companies coming out with simple solutions to solve a problem instead of coming out with complex solutions trying to find a problem. We all heard and see, uh, all heard about this uh, cashless society in China, right? Like they all people used to use mobile payment, but the level of scale that they have implemented it is amazing. I have experienced it myself. So when I arrived there on my first day, it was lunch. I wanted to have a meal in a restaurant. I entered this restaurant, and the waiter just told me that, uh, take your phone, scan the QR code on the table, the menu will pop up, and after that you pay, then we will serve the dish over to you. But I told him that this is my first day here, I do not have uh, the mobile payment facilities, and I received the most amazing reply ever. He told me this. So in this case, you might need to go to another restaurant and have a meal. <laughs> then I was like, I thought he was trying to give me some solution. And actually he did, he even gave me some recommendation. Maybe you try the street behind, uh, that restaurant maybe still has cash. Then I was like, uh, actually, I just want a plate of fried rice. Is there a get around on this? Finally, at the end, we found a get around. I paid in cash. He ran all the way back to the kitchen. Maybe he's checking whether my cash is counterfeit. Then he come all the way back and he used his mobile phone. 
and use his Alipay and pay for me. <laughs> and this is the level of skill of uh, cashless we are talking about here, where there's no alternatives. And another example, which I call psychology of value, we are all familiar with percentage discount, right? 10%, 20%, 30% discount. And what I found there is I seldom see this kind of marketing strategy. They use a lot of this concept which I call deduction. If you spend until a certain amount, deduct a certain amount of dollars. So for example, if you spend $100 minus 20, if you spend until $20 minus 2, it is exactly the same as telling you percentage discount, 20% discount. However, the difference is when they implement it online, they gamify the entire thing that it felt like game. Once again, I experienced it myself. So in Singapore, I seldom use food delivery application, but over in China, almost every other day, I use their food delivery app. It felt like a game, a cash burn game. So, so on a daily basis, uh, at the end of the day, I actually question myself, why is my behavior changing? I'm using more and more of this kind of application. Then I realized there's this uh, psychology of value inside this app. So for example, right now, uh, the amount that I've spent in the app is at $28. They will prompt me to top up until 35 minus 5. So I will always try to hit the next amount of milestone for me to enjoy the deduction of discount. <laughs> and most importantly, when I did that, I actually felt that I have a great deal. But at the end of the day, if I go back to the app, and I do the mathematics, I actually spend more. And I will buy things that I initially have no intention to buy, such as bigger portion, having dessert, having fruits, etc. And this is the deduction of value which I'm talking about here. And the last example, O2O, driving online to offline traffic. So it's something like standing block jump. They implemented in restaurants. So the further you jump, the more discount you get. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, if you jump beyond 3 meters, you actually have a free meal. <laughs> then they know that people will try to game the system, right? So what they did is, if you jump too short of the distance, you will actually need to pay more than what it costs. So most people on average actually jump to receive about 15 to uh, about 5 to 15 percent discount. So because of all these insights and experience that I've gathered over in China, uh, upon returning later on, I was invited on multiple occasions by institution and organization for me to share more about China e-commerce with the small media enterprises as well as merchants on how they can capitalize on all this to grow their business or expand their business. So I believe that uh, when you take action later on, after all this, right now I'm working on a new startup that help companies outside of China to market digitally and effectively to the China consumer market through our data-driven technology platform. So I believe when you take action, you build momentum and things start to get real. It is similar to preparing for an exam. When the examination is very far ahead, you will not start preparing. And do you realize that once you start studying the first chapter, you build momentum, it gets easier, it's similar to building a business and doing anything that you want to achieve in life. It's very important to do that first step because it builds momentum. So, on top of building momentum, which is to, co to have consistent action in the things that you want to achieve. So today, I have another piece of good news for all of you is that when you take action, you will always have an outcome. Either the outcome you want or the outcome you don't want. If we achieve the outcome that we want, we call it success. But if we achieve the outcome that we don't want, negative outcome, we don't call it failure. At least you know what works and what doesn't. Because if you take no action, there will be no outcome. Forever you will not know what you had in your mind or the things that you are curious about. Does it work or does it doesn't work? So over the past five years, so over the past five years, my life has been transformed from academic excellence, skills and career acceleration, building perfect relationships, to becoming a top leader in my area of interest. And all these will not be have achieved if I'm not curious about things around me in the first place. And after that, take massive action. So taking action sometimes can be a very, very scary thing. But when you take action, you learn in this process. 
We all heard about we need to step out of our comfort zone. But to me, stepping out of the comfort zone is just the first step. Because too often people try to step out of the comfort zone, then they feel afraid, they stand back after a few tries. So stepping out of the comfort zone is actually the first step. And to me, eliminate, eliminating that zone is actually the rest. So you must constantly focus on what you want to achieve and have that determination to further it through. So many, many years ago, mankind mastered electricity and flight technology. Human people could not imagine that they could fly beyond the sky and beyond the atmosphere. And what will we become in the next 100 years? What will be the world become in the next 100 years? And what will be the dreams of mankind be like in the next 100 years? It's all about curiosity and after that taking massive action. So today, to all the aspiring individual, I will encourage you to start taking a little step. Because a little step every day, if you've done right, will have a huge impact down the road. Let that curiosity that you always have in your mind mean something. So you can turn your curiosity into real change. Thank you everyone and have a great day.